I'm about three months into the postgraduate program for artificial intelligence and machine learning at the University of Texas at Austin. It's a seven month program designed to build concrete skills in AI and ML. And you get a professional certificate at the end of it. This is the third video of a multi-part series where I'll be reviewing the program in real time as I'm going through it. So in this video, I'll review the second module that I just completed, which was for machine learning. I'll talk through what I learned, the project that I did, the time commitment, and difficulty. Now I'll be covering the other modules in other videos, so if you wanna see more of that content, make sure to subscribe or follow. And of course, feel free to check out any of the links that I post down below to learn a little bit more about the program. With that said, let's get to it. Now having completed the first module, which was related to Python for data science, it gave me the foundation for understanding what the program will be introducing in the way of machine learning algorithms. Now, while the content in the first module was taught by Dr. Dan Mitchell, who's an assistant professor at the University of Texas, the second module was taught by Dr. Abhinanda Sarkar, who is the faculty director for Great Learning. And Great Learning, just so you know, is the platform that the university uses to deliver all of this content. That company also happens to have highly qualified staff and faculty to also help teach content for this program, but also many others. Now, the only reason I mention this is because I've seen a lot of questions come up as to whether the university faculty is the one teaching or delivering the content of this program. And the answer is when it comes to pre-recorded content, it's a mix so far where part of the program and some of the modules are taught by the university faculty and others are taught by the faculty at Great Learning, who, by the way, are incredibly qualified in this field with extensive education and experience experience in artificial intelligence, machine learning, data science. Now, outside of that content, there are also weekly live sessions to support everything that you are learning. And it's an opportunity for you to ask questions in real time. These sessions are all exclusively led by mentors who are not associated with the university. But these are actually people working in the field, which is actually really nice to have because it helps bridge concepts that you are learning in class with what what actually gets applied in the real world. Now enough about that, let's get into the content itself. In module two, we're beginning to learn about some of the most common machine learning algorithms. And there are three of them that they go into more detail on. You've got linear regression, which is a basic statistical model that allows you to predict one variable on the basis of another or multiple others. Easy example is price elasticity. If I lower the price of a product, do I sell more? And if so, how much more? Then you've got decision trees, which is an algorithm that helps make certain decisions, not surprisingly, on the basis of a lot of variables. An example would be a bank issuing loans deciding whether someone should qualify for one. They might look at income, education level, or whether they have had a prior default to determine the risk level and ultimately give a yes or a no decision. And then you've got k-means clustering, which is a way to group data together by what the algorithm determines to be some commonality. An example would be in marketing, grouping customers together based on shared buying behavior and then creating unique marketing strategies for each group. Now the content was all great, Linear regression was something that I was actually very familiar with. I had a pretty good background in statistics early on in my education, and then I've used linear regression many times over the course of my career for exactly what I mentioned, like price elasticity. Now the decision trees and k-means clustering were concepts that were relatively unfamiliar to me. So it was the first time I learned these concepts and in the context of writing Python code. Now the pre-recorded content was okay. It wasn't really my favorite. And in some cases, the explanations were quite lengthy. They were not very simple for me to understand. So I often found that I needed to supplement what I was being taught with other content that I would find online, namely on YouTube. StatQuest is one of the most popular YouTube channels as it relates to everything statistics. And they do a great job explaining complex topics. So I frequently found myself 
consulting a lot of the videos that they have on their channel. In fact, this channel is cited, I've seen, by a lot of students that are pursuing formal degree programs in data science or statistics as the go-to channel to basically learn everything that they're being taught in class. Fact of the matter is, every professor has a different teaching style. Every student has a different way of learning and retaining information. It's incumbent upon you to go find some other resource that explains it in a way that does make sense. And in my case, that was YouTube. But I also used Copilot, which is basically Microsoft's chat GPT. And I use that as a tutor. And this is actually, in my opinion, one of the best ways and one of the best use cases for a chat GPT or any kind of LLM. It's probably the best tutor you could ever have. There would occasionally be concepts that I didn't understand very well or blocks of code that maybe aren't quite fully explained. And as it relates to certain concepts, I would ask Copilot to explain it to me in detail and show some examples of how it's used. And in most cases, I got a very detailed and comprehensive response. And if I still didn't understand, I could ask it to clarify further. And within seconds, I get a, another detailed response. This has been an absolute game changer in helping me learn the material. Now I had tutors back in high school, maybe even college, to help me understand some concepts in calculus. But hiring tutors costs money. You have to schedule time that works for the both of you. And you wouldn't even be quite sure that any tutor is going to be an exact right fit for you. This co-pilot tutor is free. And I can ask it questions whenever I want and get concepts clarified in any detail. It will never get frustrated at me for not understanding. So it's been absolutely amazing and I'm retaining this information so much better because I'm asking it targeted questions and getting really detailed responses. Now the project was interesting. This involved a bank looking to expand its loan program to new and existing customers and develop some kind of marketing strategy or campaign to target those customers. Now, obviously, marketing costs money, so they want to identify customers that have the highest likelihood of taking out a loan. This involved creating a predictive model based on a decision tree. And this looked at variables like income level, education, prior defaults, mortgages, credit card debt, and many other variables. Through creating the decision tree, I was able to develop a model that did a pretty good job, had a pretty high accuracy on predicting loan take rate from all these customers. And from that, I was able to generate some recommendations based on what the algorithm determines would be a high propensity customer. Now the module content and the project actually took me quite a bit of time because these were all, for the most part, new concepts. And I had to eventually come to the conclusion that I needed to consult other resources and spend more time on it. On top of that, all the video content in this module was quite a bit longer than the first module in Python. Definitely was not succinct. Now the project itself took quite a while because the code is fairly extensive and it's a definite step up in complexity from the Python Foundations course. Now in total, this module took me on average about 12 hours a week. So it was pretty time consuming. I found this module to be fairly challenging, more so than the first. So I would actually give this maybe a three out of five. It would have been maybe a little bit higher, but it also became quite a bit easier when I decided to explore these concepts through other resources online. And even better when I started using Copilot to help me unpack a lot of these concepts. So far, my impression of the program hasn't changed. It's been a really great learning experience so far. The structure is really making sense from a content progression standpoint. And the live sessions now appear to have consistency in the mentors that are leading these sessions. You might recall from my earlier videos where I talk about there was a different mentor just about every session. Seems kind of disorganized, but happy to share that it's now been consistent. It's been the same person week in, week out, and he's been super helpful. Now, most of my questions tend to be more related to best practices in writing code, best ways to think about certain business problems, and how all these concepts that we're learning in class get applied in the real world, or 
maybe they don't get applied. I'd imagine that's pretty important too. Now that module two is done, the rest of the program seems to accelerate quite a bit. So we'll see how much the difficulty ramps up. Hope you found this review helpful. Make sure to check out my other videos in this series if you wanna learn a little bit more about my experience as I'm going through the program in real time. If you have any questions, let me know down in the comments below. With that said, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you around.